Hello everyone, today we're going to do a basic tutorial on T Navigator software. This is Abdul, this is Jason, and my name is Habib. So without further ado, let's get it started. First of all, this is how it looks like, the, the home screen of the T Navigator. It's run by Rothflow Dynamics. And we can go straight to Files and Open. We can either press Open or Control and O. It gives you the same function actually. So once you do that, you have to select your data. So in this case, in this tutorial, we're going to do the Start History Matching. Alright, so we have it right here. And what we're looking for is actually the data type. So any other type of, uh, of the folder or data, it's not going to run it unless it's data file. So we have it right over here. Snark underscore his. We're just going to press on it and open. And it's processing. All right, here we go. From here, you can check the reading actually. It's 0%. Once it's 100%, it's going to show you your model, your reservoir model. And here we go. So, all right, we go to maps. And right here, we have our reservoir. Basically, this is how it looks like. You can actually move around to see how many layers we have and how many regions we have just by double clicking on it. And we have actually five wells. So basically, this is an overview. We have the pressure here, the saturation of oil, saturation of water, saturation of gas. We have the formation volume factor. We have density, permeability. And okay, so if we just go here to show the grid lines, all right. So we go up the pressure, show the grid line. There you go. You can identify each and every cell you have in the reservoir. And if you go down here in the region section, you can actually divide your uh, reservoir. So that way it's going to be easier for you to identify it. So basically in this case, we have uh, four, four regions. All right, this is region one where the producer is. This is region two where all the wells are, the remaining wells, region 3 and region 4. And if you press fifth layer, it shows you the number of layers we have in this reservoir. It's actually a total of 12 layers. Alright? So if, you, if we go here, we can actually check out each and every... Uh, if you go here, we can actually check out each and every layer in this reservoir. All right, so we just go move this a bit, and then close them all, cross, cross, and cross. There you go. So for example, if I want to check out layer number one, which is here, there you go. This is your top layer, okay? And if you want to check out like layer number 12, for example, there you go. This is layer number 12 and so on and so forth. Alright, that's about the layers and these are all about the grid cells. Alright, and then if we go down here to the pressure, we can actually, okay, let's go back there and pick them all. Yes, pick them all. Yeah, this is this. Alright, back to our reservoir. So, this is the saturation of oil. That's actually the target, the purpose of the reservoir. So, with time, once we run it, once we run it, the saturation of oil decreases. As you can see right here, this is you have the time frame as it's moving. You can see here the oil is reducing depleting from the reservoir there you go we have a significant depletion at this uh, time frame and then that's it this is a basic overview now I'm gonna pass to my friend who is gonna complete 
whatever the remaining the graphs and whatsoever. So now let's take a look at graphs. And under graphs, there's a lot of things here: rates, total resources, analytics, pressure, flow between IPs, run statics, wealth profile, section, comparison of results, aquifers. Now let's take a look at pressure. Now in pressure, there's wells, groups, fit player, fit num, and well meter. In wells, there's prop 1, prop 2, prop 3, prop 4, and even producer. Now, let's take a look at the maps to see where are they located at. Now, you can see that pro the producer here is located in the region 1, while prop 1 to prop 4 is in region 2. There's 3 and region 4. And all separated by a fault line as you can see separating the regions now in this map you can actually see there is a driving force which is the aquifer driving force located in the southern region so when the aquifer is from the southern region the well that are located nearest to the aquifer has the highest pressure common sense now let's go back to graphs as you can see in each graph in each well i would say you can click onto the spotting pole pressure that you can use for data it's all going down as time increases and the typical pressure that I use pressure on equivalent uh, rules go down and in groups the field there's few and the field there is every pressure network node pressure loaded pressure pit player now in pit player they are named as regions here but they are actually layers I would say now what do I mean by layers? Let's take a look at the map. This is the well. This is the map. Now, let's go to... Let's uncheck everything. And let's take a look at the D-direction instead. 1, 3, move it around. You can see the layers that is accumulating as I press it. Yep, these are all actually the layers. That's all. Let's go back to graphs. And pick num, as I said just now, the four regions where region 1 is having the producer, region 2 having the prop 1 to prop 4. And in each region, you can actually utilize the average pressure for data, average water potential, average oil potential, average pressure for WEV. Now let's take a look at aquifer as I mentioned just now. In the aquifer, you can see, take a look at the graph, which is liquid rate, STV per day versus time. You can see that the accumulative influx is actually increasing, while the instant influx and instant influx rate is increasing. Same, as, same goes to the pressure here, that is decreasing. Now the data can be located, can be found here, the site here. After we run it, you can see look. Let's run it. Yep, these are the data that is actually being put into a graph. So yeah, that's it for me. So for now, uh, we'll be importing the data to uh, make the history matching. So first of all, check the template. So now we'll be comparing the oil rate. Okay. So we have to choose the history one and the normal one. So in the first uh, template, we are comparing the oil rate and in the second one, we'll be comparing the gas rate. Also, we'll choose the two items, the uh, H1 and the normal one. So here we go in the second template. And then here in the third template, we'll be comparing the liquid rate. Choosing 
the S3 one and the normal one everything and for our last template we'll be comparing the four uh, bottom hole pressure As you can see here, going through the years, year by year. I have to wait until the whole uh, four year. Then here we can compare the oil, oil and gas rate and water rate and the oil pressure for each, each one of the producers. We have four producers. Here is the data for producer one and producer two and producer three and producer four and for the main producer. Okay. Also we can check the data for each layer or and for the amplifier on it. Then later on, I will uh, go to the properties. Here in the properties, we have a lot of properties like the density, the BBT gas, BBT oil, BBT water, and the rock properties. You can check the pressure compressibility and the density, density of the oil, water, or gas. And here we have the RP water oil and the RP gas oil and the BBT for water. And I think uh, that's all for my part.